Hello, welcome to Yoga Vinyasa Flow. Today we're going to work on get just getting a nice stretchy practice in. So um, I hope you enjoy it. Um, we will be using a block or two here if your hands can't comfortably touch the ground or really get into the hip flexors and the psoas. Um, that can also be helpful when we come into a triangle pose or when we come to a wide leg forward fold. If your head doesn't touch the ground, but you're looking for that connection, then that block is really nice to help the four come up a little higher to get um, to the crown of the head. So um, I'll explain more about that when we get there, but you don't have to have a block for that. And then a strap um, we'll use more towards the end to continue the stretchy of the class. So that being said, let's come to a nice tall seat, rooting everything down and grow tall from crown to tail, zip up through that front body, maybe closing your eyes, a slight tuck in the chin. And for a moment, is there anywhere that you could soften just a little bit more? Good, and as we soften, we're just gonna take a couple quick rounds here, some nice box breathing. So nice big exhale to prepare. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five, hold, one, two, three, four, five, exhale, one, two, three, four, five, hold, one, two, three, four, five, inhale, one, two, three, four, five, hold, one, two, three, four, five, exhale, one, two, three, four, five, hold, one, two, three, four, five, return to normal breath, fingertips to the side, palms turning up, reach, reach, reach up overhead, touch those palms together, look up there, exhale, hands and heart center. Creating an intention for your practice. What would you like to give or receive? Maybe you'd like to dedicate this practice to someone or something. Gratitude is going to be my intention. You're welcome to use it. Do you have that set? <coughs> Excuse me. Inhale, reach and lengthen. Good. And let's take those arms to the side. And let's just get some nice rotation in here. Rotating from the shoulder, maybe the elbows and the wrists a little bit. Palms will turn up, hands to the shoulders, move forward and back. So if you can, try to cut the elbows together. If not, do the best you can. And as you open the elbows to the side, could you squeeze the shoulder blades together just a little bit more? Good. Now, you can stay with this if this feels good to you. Or... Take that into some circle. And then when you're ready, good, reverse the circles. And then just shake all of that out. So to open up the side body here, we're gonna go into gate pose, gate pose. So if you need cushion for your knees, like I do today, then you can bring in a nice little pillow, a folded bath towel, folded blanket, and whatever you need. You can also fold your mat up, creating multiple layers. And then from here, good, I'm going to take my left leg out to the left. Good. Now, it doesn't really matter if you've got your foot or your leg out this way, if you've got it in this way. The main thing you want to think about here is that wherever your toes are going, your hips and knee are also going in that same direction. So we don't want to try to take the toes this way and then the hip and the knee try to do something funny over here, okay? So everything is going in the same direction. Big inhale and reach, nice and tall. Exhale, side bending towards the left. So really get into the side body here. And notice if you have a habit pattern, we tend to get there when we get older of collapsing here through the shoulder. And could you just open that up? Good, inhale. Exhale, using those obliques coming back. Oh, you know what? I forgot my block. 
Some of you won't need a block if you're a really tall or get um, long arms. As those of us that don't can take a block, any height that's appropriate for your body coming over here. We're just gonna leave this leg grounded for right now and reaching over. Kind of using the block for the floor to give you just a little bit more leverage here. It's a little bit more opening here, a little bit differently than the other side. And then arm's gonna come up and I'm gonna reach and coming up. So when you take your arm up, you get a little bit more engagement if you envision that somebody's pulling on you here. So that visual can be really helpful. Big inhale and reach. Exhale, we're gonna take this over again. You can stay here, or if it's safe for you to rotate from here, you can rotate here. Some people will need to come up out of there and then rotate with a long spine. So you find your rotation in the way that fit, fit, best fits your body. I promise I'll get all my words out. Good. And then from here, we'll come back up. Good. So counterbalance that. Hand comes to the floor to a block. Now you can stay here. You can reach over. If you want a little bit more, maybe you can lift. Maybe you can reach again. And then from here, I'm going to ground down my foot. My arm's going to come up. Remember, somebody pulling on it as you come up and come down. Great. We're going to take that all to the other side. So I'm just going to move my block to the other side. Good. And then I'm going to take my right leg out here. Good. So just kind of take the rotation, hit me and toes in the way that's comfortable for you. And it might not be the same way you did it on the other side. For me, I'm different on both sides. So I have to do different things. So big inhale and reach. Exhale, get that side bend now towards the right. Again, try to avoid this little collapse here. That's your habit pattern. And then from here, we'll come up. Good. Hands going to come to the floor to a block that's appropriate for you and reaching over. Good. Now, again, arms going to come up. We're going to envision somebody pulling on it as we come up and come back to center. Taking it up, you choose your rotation. So you can always get your sides in. And then when you're ready to rotate, coming back up and rotate or you can rotate from here. Do what's appropriate for your body. And opening up. And again, arms coming up. I'm gonna reach, we're gonna take that down, taking it over. You can stay here, you can lift if you would like. So reaching, I like to kind of sometimes do a little lift. Let's see if I can get myself into a little bit of an arc. And then from here, good foot's gonna come back down. Arm's gonna come up, pulling on it as you come back up to center. Excellent work from here. We're going to transition right into all fours. I'm gonna leave my blanket right where it is, taking hands down. So spreading the fingers nice and wide, rooting through the knuckles of pinky, corner, and thumb. Belly button is in, press the floor away. Inhale, chest comes forward, pelvis tilt back. Exhale, really round. Mad cat, look towards the thigh. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Good. Now, from here, we're going to come into a child pose. So, your knees can be together as wide as the mat or somewhere in between. I'm just going to reset this here. Good. I'm going to take my knees as wide as the mat. Arms can be long in front of you, or hands can come back towards the ankles if your shoulders don't want that yet. But I'm really just up from the pubic bone to behind the navel. I'm breathing and expanding. So I've made this an active child pose here. And then from here, when you're ready, hands are going to come underneath the shoulders. And we'll press back up. We're going to prepare for downward facing dog here. So I'm just going to move this out of the way since I'm not going to be on my knees here for a moment. Good. So if you're taller, take a half a hand's width or full hand's width forward. Otherwise, you can stay where you are, tucking the toes, shifting back, press in and forward into the mat with your hands, lifting the knees and then lifting up and continuing to shift back. So I'm pressing evenly into my big toe and pinky toe mounds. 
My hips, knees, and toes are tracking in relative alignment. I'm pressing them in forward into my hands. I'm rooting through the knuckles of pinky, porter, and thumb. My elbows are turning forward, so I've got more stability and strength in that shoulder girdle. Shoulders in their pockets. My head and neck are free. You can start to bend and lengthen. The deeper you go, the harder you make it. You can walk your dog here. And if you're walking the dog, really make it active. Don't just do this. Like really press through the feet as you go from one side to the other. It's a nice little foot stretch in there if you allow it. You can come high on the toes and drop the heels. You can be in stillness. Find what works for your body in this moment. Good. Now from here, I'm gonna take stillness. My belly button is in. Inhale, look forward, bend the knees. Walk or step the feet forward to meet your hands. Come to blocks or something if you can't touch the floor. Inhale, lift and lengthen halfway long. Fine, hands to the floor, walks at any height, to the shins or to the thighs. Be where you can be with a long spine. Exhale, and bow. It's okay to bend the knees as you bow. Inhale, lift and lengthen halfway once more. Exhale, and bow. Inhale, root through the feet, engage through the glutes. It's okay if the knees are bent. Long spine as you come up. So the Purpose of that cue is to force the legs and the feet to take the load there, not the back when you come back up, okay? So from here, let's do a few of those. Big inhale and reach. Exhale and we'll fold. Inhale, lift and lengthen halfway. Exhale and we'll bow. Inhale, plant the hands. Step or hop back to plank. Now hold your plank for me. Knees can be lifted or grounded. I'm pressing away from the floor, so I'm not collapsing in the upper body. Think about protracted, protracted shoulders. Good, chest is gonna come forward a little bit here. We're long and strong. Good, and knees are gonna come down. I'm gonna untuck my toes. Elbows, I wanna turn forward. I don't wanna collapse to the shoulders. Elbows come straight back as I lower with control all the way down to the floor. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Hands can come a little bit forward into the side. Let's go into a little cobra flow here. So remember, belly button is in at all times. If your back is, feels like it's crunching or it's hurting or something like that, you're going up too deep and keep the shoulders down. They don't go up by the ears. Rolling shoulders back, belly button is in. Good. I'm gonna, you can find a baby cobra here. You can come a little higher. You can come high cobra. And we'll lower that back down. Inhale, exhale, pressing through the right hand. I'm gonna lift, go to your limit, looking over left shoulder and coming down. Inhale, exhale, center, baby, medium or high and lower back down. Good, belly button is in, good, come up, press through the left hand, look over the shoulder, take it to your limit and we'll come back down. This last time through center, you can choose baby, medium or high cobra. You can go right into the upward facing dog if you've got that in your practice. So rolling the shoulders back, baby, medium, high, or you can tuck the toes or be on top of the toes and find it. I'm pushing the floor away. I'm looking up. I'm not hanging in my spine. And then I'm going to lower back down with control, with care. Good. Hands under the shoulders and wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Stronger, more experienced yogis can tuck the toes, push up into planks to back down dog. Everyone else, follow me. Moving through a tabletop, lifting up, find your down dog. Your belly button is in nice and tight here. Find that upper body engagement. Inhale, look forward, bend the knees. Walk, step, or hop your feet forward to meet your hands. Inhale, lift and lengthen halfway, coming where you need to come. Exhale, and we'll bow. Let's do that one more time. Inhale, lift and lengthen halfway. Exhale and we'll bow. Inhale, root through the feet, engage the glutes, rise. Exhale, hands to heart center. So let's take a few of those a little bit quicker. Go at your own pace. Go at your level. If you need to skip the flow, that's okay. You will not see me take every one that I cue today. Big inhale and reach. Exhale and we'll fold. Inhale, lift and lengthen halfway. 
Exhale, and we'll bow. Inhale, plant the hands. Step or hop back to plank. You choose. Take or skip a flow. Halfway down if you're flowy. If not, I need to come all the way to the floor. Exhale, downward facing dog. From downward facing dog, inhale, look forward, bend the knees. Walk, step, or hop your feet forward to meet your hands. Inhale, lift and lengthen halfway. Exhale, roll bow. Inhale, root, engage, and rise. Exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale, and we'll lift. Exhale, and we'll fold. Inhale, lift and lengthen halfway. Exhale, and we'll bow. Inhale, plant the hands. Step or hop back to plank. You choose, take or skip a flow. Remember, if you're not flowing, this is also an excellent opportunity to work on a nice, juicy plank. Build that strength. From your down dog, when you're ready, inhale, look forward, bend the knees. Walk, step, or hop your feet forward, meet your hands. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, roll down. Inhale, root, engage, and rise. Exhale, hands to heart center. Last one of these. Inhale, and we lift. Exhale, and we'll fold. Inhale, lift and lengthen halfway. Exhale, roll bow. Inhale, plant the hands. Step or hop back to plank. You choose. Take or skip a flow. Good. From the downward facing dog when you're ready, inhale, look forward, bend the knee. Walk, step, or hop your feet forward to meet your hands. Inhale, lift and lengthen halfway. Long spine. Exhale, and roll bow. Inhale, root, engage, and rise. Exhale, hands to heart center. Finding breath, mountain, and tension. All right, let's go into a different pattern here. You will want your blocks on this one. I'm gonna bring mine in here. Okay, so from here, big inhale and reach. Exhale and we'll fold. Inhale, lift and lengthen halfway. Exhale and we'll bow. From here, we're going to step the right foot back first. Find that left up runner. So your front heel is going to stay grounded. This knee is over behind the ankle. I'm on parallel railroad tracks here. So nothing on this leg is turning out. Nothing is grounded. That heel is lifted. I've got my blocks as I need them. So remember, we've got three here, here, or here. If you've got long arms, you can also press into the floor. So I'm pressing away from the floor into my block. My left hip is gonna come back just a little bit. I'm strongly pressing through that right heel. So you wanna try to get out of this droopy habit pattern if you can. Be strong, work on that strength. Press back back there. Belly button is in, chest push forward. Breathe. Make your muscles work. Strong muscles, strong bones. If you're not using your muscles, you're just kind of hanging there. You're not really doing them. Good. From here, when you're ready, good. We're going to lower this back knee down. Good. I'm just going to pause here for a moment. So it's a little bit of a different, slightly different hip flexor stretch here. Good. Now we're going to come and we're going to counter that, make that front leg feel better. So we're gonna come back here, half split pose. So you just wanna be careful. I have this habit pattern if I'm not paying attention or trying to lock out this knee, see how bad that looks. Keep it a little bit soft. Use your blocks to help you as needed. And it's okay if you need to take this heel forward, but your spine is long here. Left hip is back. Just getting that little hammy stretch here. Good. Now from here, we're gonna rock back forward. You have options. If you need this to be a little bit easier, a little bit more gentle stay going into the twist, you can keep this knee grounded and your right hand can be on the block, any height or the floor, and you'll open up to the left. If you want more power and balance behind it, tuck the back toe, lift that knee. Again, you're gonna press back, you're back in that strong up runner, and then the hand will press into the block or to the floor and open up to the left. Reach, reach, reach. Now, wherever it is that you're twisting, doesn't really matter here. I'm gonna give you an option. You can stay here, 
You can turn that palm behind you. Maybe you want to half wrap it around. Open up that left shoulder. Find the stretchy there. Press away from the floor of the block, wherever you've got that right hand. And then from here, we're going to release. We're going to come down. I'm going to take my blocks forward. You'll lift the back knee if you had it grounded for that one. Planting the hands, front foot steps back. You choose take or skip a flow. Noticing how one side starting to feel compared to the other. Good. So find that good down dog form. Find that stable shoulder girdle. Right leg's going to lift three point. I'm going to bend. I'm going to open to the right. I'm trying not to let that right shoulder lift. My belly button is in. My gaze is at that left big toe. And then I'm going to take that down. Inhale, look forward, bend the knees, walk, step, or hop your feet forward to meet your hand. Inhale, lift and lengthen halfway. Exhale, and we'll bow. We're gonna take that all to the other side. Now your left leg is gonna step back now. You're in that right up runner. So we're in the parallel railroad tracks with the feet. Try to press evenly into big toe and pinky toe bounds of that back foot that will help you keep your heel from doing funny things. So. Really lengthen. Good. The right hip's going to come back a little bit. I'm pressing away from the floor, pressing away from the block. My belly button is in. Strong back leg. We're still breathing here. Come back to that intention. And then, if it would be okay, we're going to lower down the back knee. I'm going to bring in. Push in here. Good. Now, from here, just hold this for a little bit longer. Good. Now we're gonna take that half split pose. So with or without your blocks, based on what you need. Good, we're just gonna come back, lengthening. Get careful not to walk. Use your blocks as needed, long spine. A little bit better in playing with my hip. You want to try to get everything here in line with the hips. Sometimes when I do the side, for whatever reason, this heel likes to be out a little bit wider. Good. Now from here, we're going to come back in. So setting ourselves up for the twist, you choose. Are you going to keep that back knee grounded, pressing the left hand into the block or to the floor as you open? Or are you going to add more power and balance to it, tucking the back toe, lifting, pressing back? Good. Find your up runner first, then opening up. So again, whether you're lifted or grounded in that back leg matters not. If you want that little shoulder opener bonus, turn that palm behind you, wrap that arm, open up that right shoulder. Good, and then when you're ready, we're gonna release, coming down. Back knee will lift if you had it grounded. Block can come forward, planting the hand. Front foot will step back, you choose take or skip a flow. I'm gonna skip this one too. And then once you've made your way back to your downward facing dog, come back to that good down dog form. Left leg's gonna lift three points, bending that knee, opening to the left, trying to keep left shoulder grounded, head and up your screen. Your gaze is to that right big toe. And then when you're ready, good, we'll release and come down. From your downward facing dog, when you're ready, inhale, look forward, bend the knee, walk, step, or hop your feet forward to meet your hands. Inhale, lift and lengthen halfway. Exhale, and we'll bow. Inhale, root through the feet, engage the glutes, rise all the way up. Exhale, hands and heart center, finding breath, mountain, and tension. So let's take this into another little stretchy here before we go to our next series. So I'm going to come to Temple Mudra. I'm going to reach up here. So I'm trying to squeeze my biceps into my ears. Good. Now, trying to keep shoulder and hips together as best as I can. It's harder if your legs are together. It's easier if your hip is apart. Good. I'm going to side bend towards my left. When I come to my left, I'm going to really press into my right side. And I want to breathe and expand here. So this is similar to how we did it. 
in gate pose at the beginning. Okay, now use your obliques, your side abs on the right, come all the way back up to center. We're gonna take that to the other side, getting a nice side bend to the right. I'm pressing through my left side. I'm trying not to let that left shoulder, that top shoulder collapse. I'm breathing and expanding. My belly button's still in here. And then engaging those obliques, those side abs on the left side, I'm gonna come all the way back up and release. Good. So from here, we're gonna take a little balance challenge as we go back into warrior one. So what this is gonna look like here, I'll show this real quickly. You're gonna be on your left side. You're gonna come here. You're not gonna come into a full warrior three. You're just gonna go forward a little bit, tap that toe down. We'll do that a few times and then step back into the warrior one. So from here, left leg, right toe comes back. Even up your hips a little bit here, zip up the front body. I'm gonna take my arms up. You can take yours down, choose where you need to be. And when you're ready, sit. I'm just gonna come forward a little bit. It's okay if that's supporting me then. And come back and tap. And come back a little bit. Hip knee and toe track forward, no internal rotations. And come back one more time. I'm gonna take it back. I'm gonna hold right here for just a moment. And now I'm gonna step that back, warrior prep, finding my warrior one. If you need a different alignment here, heel to heel, heel to arch, a little bit wider with that back leg, take it. Remembering it's best if that back edge of the back foot is grounded than for the front knee to be bent. But if it is, hip knee and toe are tracking forward and you can see that toe. Front hip will come back here, reaching. Reaching forward, belly button is in. We're gonna open to the right. And we'll come back center. Reaching up. You can stay here or really zip up that front body, maybe opening just a little bit here. Coming up, adding on. Lengthen, lengthen, lengthen as you take that path to the mat. Hands can come on the inside of that foot on the floor or onto a block. That might be where you stay, or maybe you come out a little bit 45-ish degrees. If you're here, maybe you wanna shift back a little bit, so you're getting a little bit more into the hip. Watch your knees, make sure they're not squeaky. And then you can also, if you are able, take your forearms to your block or to the floor. So these are all options. You choose the best option for your body. And then from here, we're gonna come up and I'm gonna walk that back around. Good, framing that front foot, swiveling up the back foot, front foot steps back, you choose. Take or skip a flow. So from your down dog, when you're ready, inhale, look forward, bend the knees, walk, step, or hop your feet forward to meet your hands. Inhale, lift and lengthen halfway. Exhale, little back. Inhale, long spine, root engage and rise. Exhale, hands to heart center, coming back to the breath. Your mountain, your intention. What intention that you make for yourself at the beginning of class. We're gonna take that all to the other side. So now my right leg, hip knee and toe, we're gonna track forward. Good, I'm gonna take my left foot back. I'm squaring off the hips here. It's okay for that knee to bend as we move. Zipping up, take your arms. We're gonna take them straight up or straight down. And when you're ready, good. We're gonna lean forward just a little bit and come back, tap that down. And we'll come forward just a little bit. Come back and tap. Last time, come forward a little bit. Hold it here for just a moment. Belly button is in nice and tight. Step it back. Warrior prep, find the alignment that you need. And then front hip will come back, back hip will come forward. Pressing through the back edge of the back foot. Belly button is in. When you're ready, arms are coming forward. We're gonna open to the left now. We're gonna open to the left. Always look where you're going. Coming back to center, reaching up. Belly button is in. If you want to, you can stay here or you can open into a little bit of a deeper back bend. 
and we'll come up inhale exhale lengthen 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 watch that front knee angles should not change hands can come on the inside they can come onto a block you choose you can stay there you can walk out a little bit 45 ish degrees you can hinge the hips back a little bit here apologies about the view but go where you can go any funny business happening in either knee in this one back off until that goes away sometimes they can get a little torquey here so we got to be mindful and when you're ready we'll come back up walk those hands back around swivel up the back foot front foot steps back you choose take or skip a flow From your downward facing dog when you're ready. Inhale, look forward, bend the knees, walk, step, or hop your feet forward to meet your hands. Inhale, lift and lengthen halfway. Exhale, and we'll bow. Inhale, root, engage, and rise. Exhale, hands to heart center. Finding that breath, the mountain intention. Going into a new pattern here, we're gonna go into warrior two. This will include triangle. This is where we're gonna to start to come into those wide leg forward folds. So if you know you need a block for triangle, have that on your left side. If you're gonna use a block um, for a little bit of a headrest, I'm um, in wide leg forward fold, you can have that on your right side because that's the side that we're gonna open up to. Good. So from here, when you're ready, I'm gonna set my right foot back. I'm going to warrior prep. We're going to come into warrior two. Good. So find your alignment that you need. Good. Front hip will come back. Hips stay where they are. Open to the side. Looking over that front middle finger. Strong to the back edge of the back foot. Good. With a bent front knee or a long leg, we'll take this back into exalted. If you would like that arm binder arm wrap here, you can take it. Otherwise, just see if you're not bound, reach up towards that ceiling. Inhale, exhale, finding warrior two, preparing for triangle, lengthening the leg, making any adjustments that you need. Front hip's gonna come back, back hip's gonna come forward, zip up that front body. Good, reach, reach, reach. Root those feet into the mat like you're trying to rip it apart. When you can come no more with that long spine, take a thigh, take a shin, take a block, take the floor, stacking those shoulders as we open up to the side. Look up there at that hand. Not only does that activate the throat chakra, but it gives you a little neck stretch here too, a little throat stretch. And when you're ready, we're gonna look down at that front foot. We're gonna put a bend in that front knee. Hands are gonna come on the inside. We're gonna walk this around, coming into a wide leg forward fold. Now set yourself up here for a moment. Good. Your, the edges of your feet are gonna be parallel to the short edges of your mat. You want your two toes to be in alignment. So we don't want one foot forward of the other. Good. Now for some of you, this might be all that you wanna to do today and that's okay. You're welcome to stay here. You can hinge back a little bit, find what you need. Others, I'm gonna bend my elbow straight back. Good. I'm gonna let the top of my head come to the block, use any height of the block that you can. And some of you no doubt can touch the head to the floor and that's okay too. Now, I'm just lightly touching my head to the block. You wanna lightly touch the head to the floor here. Your legs, your feet, your shoulders, your hands are taking the load. And then from here, pressing into the hands, lift up off the block. Good. Now, a little bend in the knees, walk the hands up. Good. So we're gonna come up here. Good. Now we're gonna flow a little bit from here, hip and toes, turn to the side, sunrise flow, big inhale and reach, exhale and come down. Good. Watch your knees. We don't want them to fall inward and do these awkward things. So really press through the outer edges of the feet. If that's not possible, take a shorter stance until you get stronger. Good. Now from here as we come up, we're just gonna get a side bend over. 
and we'll come down, taking that side bend over and come down. Good. Find a goddess prayer or a goddess squat here. Good. Belly button is in. Good. Try not to do this forward thing here. That's a different, that's a different move. Adjust your feet and legs accordingly. And we'll come up and reach. Good. From here, reach it forward. Use the block to help you if you use that or hands to the floor. We're going to make our way back towards the front. So now you're back in the left up runner. Plant the hands, front foot steps back. You choose, take or skip a flow. And while you're flowing, I'm just going to chain side here. Good. So I'm going to leave my block in the center for that head support. Good. Your other block, if you're going to use it in triangle, is going to come on the outside of the right foot. Good. And then from here, when you're ready, from the top of your mat. Big inhale. We're going to step the left foot back. Good. Coming into warrior two on this side. So find your alignment. Good. My front hip will come back. I'm going to open the chest and reach. Good. Gaze is off the front of that middle finger. Relax the shoulders. With a bent front knee or a lengthened front leg, we'll take this back into exhausted. Reaching up there. If you did an arm bind or a wrap at this point on the other side, find what you need. Something similar. And when you're ready, good. Finding your warrior two. Setting yourself up for a successful triangle on the side. Make any adjustments that you need. And then front hip's going to come back. Back hip's going to come forward. Root in those feet. Lengthen, lengthen, lengthen. Long spine, when you can come no more, take a thigh, take a shin, take a block, take the floor. I don't think I need it the side. Good, and open up into a nice back. Reaching. And then from here, I'm gonna look down at that front foot. We're gonna put a bend in that front knee. Good, my hands are gonna come onto the center. I'm gonna walk around. So we're back in that wide leg forward fold again. Watch your feet alignment, watch your toe alignment. And then from here, when you're ready, good. Maybe you can take, so I may not need this here to on the side. Good. You can take the head down. Maybe it's on something. Maybe you're almost there, but not quite like I am. So I'm not going to force anything to happen. I'm just going to let things happen as they do. But I'm strong in my upper body. So I'm not collapsing through the shoulders. I'm pushing them away. I'm pressing to the outer edges of the feet. All the benefits of headstand are right here without the risk. And then from here, we're gonna come back up. Good. A little bend in the knees, walk the hands back up. Good. And here we go again, hips, knees, and toes. We're gonna turn out away from the body. Good. Let's take that sunrise flow once more. Big inhale. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Now, from here, I'm going to take my hands to the floor. For some of you, this is going to be it. Some of you, hands are going to be on blocks. You may not even be this far. I'm going to take my knee. I'm going to bend. I'm going to go to my left here. For some of you, this is enough. This heel doesn't leave the floor. Others are going to come in here for me. Others are going to come in here a little bit deeper. Maybe you turn over this way. So where I find this one to be hard, not just keeping the heel grounded, but keeping this knee unlocked, because as you can see there, that looks gross and painful. So keep it a little soft. Good. And then we're going to come back to center. You can stay here. We're going to take that to the other side. I'm going to go towards the right. And remember, you don't have to come as deep as me. You do what you can do. For some of you, that's going to be here. Others, you're going to open up, find what you need. And when you're ready, then we'll come back up, coming back to center. So hips, knees, and toes are still turned out. I'm going to bend my knees, though. Hands are going to come to my thigh. Good. I'm going to take a goddess squat here. Good. 
I'm just reach this way. Maybe elbow touches the thigh, maybe it doesn't. Really reach this arm over. Coming back center, going to the other side and reach. And coming back center. And when you're ready, hands are gonna come back down. Good, you are going to frame that foot, that right foot, good. You're in that up runner, plant the hands, front foot steps back. You choose, take or skip that flow. From the down dog, when you're ready, we're gonna drop to the knees. Good, and find a juicy child's pose from here. So knees can be together as wide as the mat, somewhere in between. You can take your arms long in front of you or hands by the ankles. You can let the belly go here. It's been a nice, juicy, and relaxing child pose. So you can stay here for as long as you'd like. Otherwise, hands can come under the shoulder and we're gonna come up here into a seat. Now, we're gonna come to a seated forward fold. And I'm going to show you a couple things. I'm gonna bring my strap in here. You can always sit in the block or a folded blanket, but just to kind of show you here, a lot of people sit with their feet kind of turned inward, kind of like that. They're not aware of that habit pattern. See if, if, you, if, that, if that's you, see if you can take your strap and put the strap around the ball, the big toe mound and the pinky toe mound. Press evenly into the strap so they're nice and flat, like you're standing on the wall in front of you. And that'll help you kind of break some of that habit pattern, okay? Um, even I, after many years, I still have to pay attention to that because I can go back into that habit pattern very, very quickly. So you can, if you know you don't need a strap and you go beyond, you can bring in a block here. Otherwise, I'm just gonna bring a strap in here today for fun. Okay. We'll come up, let the knees be soft as needed. Inhale, exhale, long spine. I'm gonna hinge forward first. And then when I can come no more, I'm gonna roll. And then if you've got your strap, you can choke up as needed. Good. Take it as needed. Breathe into the back body. And breathing into the back body is like breathing deep for the uh, medical provider to listen to your lungs. The same thing. And then when you're ready, good. We're gonna come up from there. Have your strap handy. We're gonna come back to that in just a moment. Those of you that want to get a little bit of a core um, engagement as you come down to the floor, you can. Um, it's harder if your legs are longer. It's easier if your knees are bent. Knees are bent. You also have the benefit of holding on to your thigh. Um, they give you a little bit of support. Otherwise, go where you can go. Zipping up. Pelvis is going to tilt back. I'm going to scoop in that belly button and roll it down. And some people are not meant to do roll downs. And if that's you, just come onto your back. And as you come down, then we're going to put a bend in the knees. So we're gonna to come to one big bridge here. So I'm gonna roll my shoulders back. On this one, I want you to really press the arms and the shoulders into the floor as you also press into the feet and lift. We're hip width apart here. So I'm pressing into the floor with my arms and shoulders. Inhale, exhale, I'm gonna press into the feet and lift. So if you're not used to engaging the upper body in your bridge, does it make the bridge feel more like you're doing something? Maybe more stable, stronger. If you're a glute squeezer in the bridge, release the glutes. How does that change your bridge? If you're not a glute squeezer, squeeze the glutes. See how that changes your bridge. Does one feel better, the same or worse? And then when you're ready, we'll lower that back down. So to get one more little upper body stretch here, I'm gonna take my strap. Some of you may not need the strap for this one because you can bind your hands under your glutes for this bridge beautifully and without any pain or discomfort to the wrist or the shoulders or the elbows. Other people like myself do better with a strap. So 
You can hold on to the strap with the hands in line with the shoulders. You can take them closer together. Um, it's gonna be completely up to you and your body. But everything else, I'm just gonna roll under a little bit here. Inhale, exhale, pressing into the feet, lifting up. I'm pressing my shoulders into the mat. I'm reaching my arms, my hands towards my heels. So find the engagement that works best for you. Some of you might have to roll the shoulders under just a little bit more once you get up here. And then when you're ready, then we'll carefully release and come down. Good. We're going to go into a final stretchy sequence here. I'm going to take my left foot into the strap. It can be anywhere. The strap can be anywhere. I'm going to take both straps to my left hand, though. I'm letting everything settle down into its pocket, the hip pocket here. And then from here, belly button is in, both hips grounded. Let that left leg go out to the left. Good. And then you can wiggle around to find your sweet spot. I like a little tug towards the shoulder. Not everybody does. Knees might be bent. They might not be. We do what we can do. When you're ready, we'll come back up. Good. I'm going to switch hands. So we're not going to take this into the twist yet. I just want the 45-ish degree angle. But I'm just going to arc over, wiggle around, find your best spot. And then if you want the juicy spot, move the foot around. And you'll know it when you hit it. You're ready. We'll come back up. Remove that foot from the strap. Cross your left ankle over the right knee. This might be your figure four. Others are going to gently pull this in towards the chest, maybe holding on to the knee or the foot. Others are going to be able to um, clasp through here. Upper body's grounded. And maximizes the stretch here. Breathe and expand. And then when you're ready, good, we'll release. I'm gonna keep everything right there. I'm gonna let everything drop over to the right figure four twist. I'm getting back in here again, breathe and expand. And if figure four twist is not for you, you know, just undo that then and just do a basic supine twist, it's all good. And when you're ready, using your obliques, your abs, come back into center. We're gonna take that all to the other side. Now that strap is gonna go around the right foot, right foot. Good, let everything kind of settle down. And then when you're ready, good, we'll take that right leg out to the right. Both hips stay grounded, wiggle around, find your sweet spot. Your other hip is grounded. When you're ready, we'll bring this back up. Good. Switching out the hands. Good. Find that 45 -ish degree arc. Wiggle around. Find your 45 degree. And then if it's okay for you, just move that foot around. Finding an interesting stretch. And it may not be in the same place or angle that it was for you on the other side. Mine is totally not. And coming back up, we'll release that foot from the strap. Cross the right ankle over the left knee. You can stay here for this figure four, or you can bring it into the chest. You can thread it through. Find yours. Three. And then when you're ready, good, we'll release. Going into the final twist here, figure four twist. Inhale, exhale, roll, roll that over to the left. Look to the right. And 
And when you're ready, we'll come back to center and undo. Good. Wiggle around here. Find your optimal setup for your short Shavasana today. This should be some position that you can be relatively still in and not fidget around. I'm going to have my knees bent today, but you can totally take everything long and flop open. You can also be on your side or on your belly. And then from here, I will let you sink into the space and then back to your intention. One more time. I'm taking some deep breaths here. Choose stillness or gently take head and neck from side to side, wiggling fingers and toes. Choose stillness or taking knees into the chest, choosing to stay grounded or tucking the chin lifting up into a full body hug. And choosing stillness. Removing any props out of the way if you use spinning in Shavasana time. Taking legs long in front of you, arms long behind you, and reach and lengthen from the edge of the fingertips, the edge of the toes, point and flex the feet, bend and stretch the hands, twirling wrists and ankles in one direction, and then in the other. And then from here, whenever you're ready, bending in both knees, you choose rolling over to your right or left side, the side that works best for your body in this moment, taking all the time that you need here. And when you're ready, we press ourselves up to a comfortable seat where we started our practice. Find that nice tall spine again. Fingertips to the side, palms turning up. Inhale, reach, 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 looking up there. Exhale, bringing it down, touching the thumbs to the forehead for good and through thought to the lip for good and kind words, and to the heart, for open and loving heart. Knowing no effort on this mat is ever wasted, no gain is ever reversed. May you be safe, may you stay well, may you have a wonderful day, evening, week, month, season ahead. Namaste.